All right, you guys, in this video, what I wanted to show you quickly is how you uh, utilize weighted average measurements in magnet field for your uh, topography and your topo shots. So I'll create a job called weighted average measurements. You can use the total station robotic or GPS. It really does not matter. It's a function of uh, the topo or the collecting uh, measurement uh, screen. So it doesn't matter what equipment you're using. Uh, my... Uh, what is it, coordinate system, and all of these settings are kind of irrelevant for this function. I am already connected to a uh, simulated uh, network connection here. You would connect to your GPS, total station, or robotic, doesn't matter. You would go into your survey, you would go into topo, and you would kind of see yourself in the screen if you have the background loaded, of course. Otherwise, it would be just a blank screen. Maybe you'd be in the actual normal screen. It doesn't matter which screen you're in, but... I, for the uh, sake of the video, I'll just leave it in the map view. So uh, let's say we call this our average measurement. Um, you would want to, uh, if you're doing a nice measurement, I would probably do 30 readings or something. I'm doing this in a classroom on a simulator, so I will just leave it, say, three. But again, I recommend 30 at least over here, especially when you're doing GPS stuff. If you're doing a... Um, robotic or a total station, it probably isn't necessary to bump this up to much higher than one or two. All right, so I will go ahead and take these measurements. Let me see if I can zoom in on this thing, just so that we see that we're next to a sprayer and a field apparently here. But let me take the three measurements here. Hopefully it'll stay put. So we'll do one, two, and three. We'll store it. So at this moment, what we have is we have a point and that point is whatever it is currently if you go into edit you see it's just the stuff that you're used to seeing the logic behind the weighted average is that you uh, approach this same um, point that you've now taken at least once during the day from a different angle so currently for example i would have approached it from the south going north so i would have set up my maybe my uh, GPS or my prism or uh, whatever I'm holding in my hand in a direction where uh, that's my north, right? So next, what I would probably do, if but not immediately after taking the shot, I would maybe in a GNSS uh, world kind of give it a couple of minutes, maybe an hour, go do whatever else surveying you have to do, go do around and come back and actually approach this shot and come from this direction, set it down on that same point, and record it, re-record it. And re-recording it means you're actually going to record it as point number 100 again. So when you do this and you leave the pole there, and on purpose, I will go a little bit off to the side here. I moved it a slight like, uh, by a little bit, but when I, what I'll do is I'll do three measurements here again. And what it'll say, it'll say, hey, this point number already exists. Do you want to override it, rename it, or stack, uh, store it as a checkpoint? And this is the magic button over here. It says, all right, we are going to use it in a weighted average uh, mode. And you can see because I moved the simulator, because I'm simulating that the pole was moved and it was it's not in the same spot, we missed it by uh, a tenth in the northing and about a uh, tenth, almost two tenths on the actual easting. So I'll say, okay, I am aware of this will hit OK and what you'll be presented with is now you'll have two measurements on point number one, uh, 100 and they are all used in the weighted average so when you now look at the actual edit points here uh, you still have one coordinate only but it now has a WA weighted average um, what is it uh, tab and you can choose either one of these settings to actually exclude uh, there's no better or worse uh, point to exclude right now because we only have two so what i'll do is maybe i'll do this a third time so we'll hit the ok button and once again maybe i'll just and you see where my mouse is i'm on purpose just moving it to the side again over here so i'll set it a little bit to the right and again, the logic is a couple of hours, minutes later, you would approach it from the east, for example, set your pole down on that same point. Again, rename it to point number 100. We'll hit the OK button and we will take another 30 seconds of measurements. In my case, it's three. Uh, and once again, it'll say, hey, uh, this is now off by two tenths, by seven tenths over here, eight tenths almost. What do you want to do? I'll say store it as a checkpoint using weighted average. That's correct. We'll hit the OK button. 
And now we have three of these. And what's happening in the background, obviously, you get it, is it's spreading out the actual uh, error throughout all of my measurements. So we'll hit the OK button again. Maybe three times is probably my minimum that I usually do. Uh, for the sake of the video, I'll do one last one. We'll move it here, maybe. And again, I'm imagining that I approached it from this factor over here from the west and set my pole down. Again, I'll call this point number 100. And we'll store three measurements on this thing again two and three right here oh of course the simulator has to pretend that we move the pole but okay um hit the okay button once again it says well according to what we see you're off by two tenths and a tenth on my northing and easting uh, again i'm using it as a checkpoint and i'm adding it to the weighted average now the magic that can happen here is if you're done and you go into your edit points you still only have one point but under the edit tab you can go in here and say you know what this really looks like it's the worst uh, easting residual that i have so you can exclude it from the average and when you do that it rebalances all of your points and throws out that inaccurate uh, measurement so if you look at the actual coordinates uh, let's look at our easting that was the one that moved mostly so it's 73.0358 versus 73.2371 so this is a live conversion going on with this thing and you can kind of see oh my bubble is out so if it's always out in the same direction you know that your pole is out if you approached it from four different quadrants and the results should be pretty accurate but if you see one of them out then something was off but the resulting um uh, you know, coordinate should be more precise than just taking one 30 second measurement on it. So, again, um, the logic behind this is just getting more accurate readings for one point. Obviously, I'm in a simulator, I had to pretend that I'm actually moving the pole and moving the actual um, uh, rover or prism, whatever you're actually shooting. But if you're occupying the same point over and over again, that nice weighted average. Um, tab that appears with a point that you just shot allows you to do magic allows you to do rebalancing of your points say this one's bad and then you see that it's still and now these two are bad so you can kind of tell just by glancing at the residuals what's the worst point that um introduced the most error and then hope that uh either everything's really great or just throw out the one that's the biggest outlier all right uh this is good for really precise uh, measurements with uh, GPS or total station if you need this extra uh, you know, level of precision. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.